Deputy Speaker. Call on order of the day number nine. To Kaurau, our Maki Claim Settlement Bill, first reading. Mr Speaker. The Honourable Christopher Nissen. Mr Speaker, I move that the Takara Maki Claim Settlement Bill be now read a first time, and I nominate the Māori Affairs Committee to consider this bill. I want, sir, to begin by welcoming the representatives of Takara Maki who are here in Parliament today to attend this first reading. I acknowledge their ancestors and the weight of the historical grievances that they have borne. And I also want to acknowledge the recent passing of Eru Thompson, a kaumatua of Ngāti Mahanga and Karaa Maki. Mr Thompson was the iwi spokesperson when we signed an agreement in principle in early 2010. The Karaa Maki representatives here today will be returning to Auckland after this first reading to attend his tangi, and I acknowledge their grief. Mr Speaker, on 22 February this year, I signed a deed of settlement on behalf of the Crown with Te Kaurau Amaki. The deed and this treaty settlement bill put to rest the long-standing grievances of Te Kaurau Amaki. This iwi and their members are descendants of the youngest son of the ancestor Maki, named Tafia Kiterangi, who also took the name to Karao Amaki. There are other iwi and hapu who claim descent from Maki's other sons, such as Natu Manuhiri, who have their own treaty settlement. Collectively, these descendants of Maki are sometimes called the Takarao Confederation, which can cause confusion. Takarao Maki hold customary interests in the Tamaki region, particularly through Hikurangi and the Waitakari Ranges, which can be described as the heartland of Te Kaurau Amaki. Their customary interests also extend through lands in the upper Waitamata Harbour, the North Shore, and into the Mahurangi Coast and South Kaipara. This is a broad rohe through which Te Kaurau Amaki maintain relationships with many other iwi. In 2008, the Crown recognised the mandate of the Te Kararao Iwi Tribal Authority to represent Te Kararao Amaki in negotiations. A year later, in June 2009, Sir Douglas Graham proposed that all the Iwi Hapu in the Kaipara, Tamaki and Hauraki regions, including Te Kararao Amaki, enter direct negotiations with the Crown to settle their historical treaty grievances. Sir Douglas also proposed collective redress for the iwi of Tāmaki over the Monga and the Motu. Te Karaa Maki has been part of these collective negotiations and I'm pleased to remind the House the Namana Whenua o Tāmaki Makaurau Collective Redress Bill was read on 23 July for the third time during the final treaty settlement day of the previous parliamentary term as of course was the Tuhoi Claim Settlement Bill. So it's therefore fitting that the first Treaty Settlement Day of this parliamentary term will see progress on yet another settlement bill from the Tamaki region. I intend to bring further bills to the House next year and the year after as the Government finalises all settlement negotiations across uh, Tamaki, Hauraki and Kaipara. And I acknowledge, because he's in the, uh, the gallery today, Mike Drever, who has been the Crown's chief negotiator and has done a really fine job on behalf of the Crown on all these negotiations. Mr Speaker, in February 2010, I signed on behalf of the Crown an agreement of principle with Te Kaurau Amaki. Negotiations continued until 12 December last year when the negotiators and I initialed a, de uh, initialed a deed of settlement. After initialing, the Tribal Authority took the deed to the wider community, 
Hui were held and a vote was taken, 99% of those who voted support the settlement. This is an outstanding result and I congratulate Kaurau Amaki on their fine efforts. For the negotiating team, I must acknowledge the perseverance of Te Wairara Toa, the lead negotiator and the chairman of the tribal authority. When I signed the deed of settlement in February, I said he was a very difficult man to deal with, and I stand by that uh, statement of the truth. Through our negotiations, we traversed a number of hard issues. We ultimately resolved them, uh, and this will be uh, for the benefit and the durability of the settlement. Finally, behind the negotiators have been the trustees for the Iwi Tribal Authority. They have worked tirelessly to have their grievances addressed, and I acknowledge that the treaty settlement process has been a very long journey for you. Mr Speaker, it's worth saying something about these historical grievances. Te Maki lost most of their land through extensive and excessive Crown purchases in the three decades after the signing of the treaty. What reserves were set aside were never protected and were gradually alienated from tribal control. At the end of this process, Te Amaki were rendered landless. This had a severe impact on the health and well-being of their community, uh, and today they are one of the few iwi and tamaki who do not have a marae or an urupa on their own land. The financial and commercial redress provided to Te Kararawa Maki recognises the losses that have been suffered by them. They will receive $6.5 million plus interest, and with this money, they will acquire 86% of Riverhead Forest Crown Forest Licence land. The accumulated rentals that come with the forest will provide a cash reserve and allow other commercial opportunities to be taken up. With good management, this redress will provide the iwi with a commercial base for the future. Cultural redress provided to Te Maki includes the vesting of nine culturally significant sites, including lands on which they can establish a marae and an urupa. The balance of the cultural redress package includes an overlay classification over Te Henga, Historic Reserve, 11 statutory acknowledgements, and other redress that is culturally significant to the iwi. Mr Speaker, I consider the bill should proceed without delay to the Māori Affairs Select Committee. As I said, uh, often in the last parliament, it was brilliantly chaired by Mr Henare, and I have no doubt at all that the new team in the Māori Affairs Select Committee are going to deal with this legislation urgently and get it back to the House for its final stages. I commend the bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call uh, Pene Henare. Atenakwe, Mr Speaker. Kāti te whare reo Māori to allow you time. Mr Speaker.